Hello everybody, welcome back to another review. Today I'll be, today I'll be taking a look at the Inside Out 2 Blu-ray. I just got it in the mail today from Target, the, um, the 4K Ultra HD Steelbook. I paid 40 bucks for that after a discount I had, and the Inside Out 2 Blu-ray was 25 before the discount. I think the Steelbook was 51 before the discount, actually. So yeah. 51.99 for the Steelbook, and then 24.99 for the regular Blu-ray, and then they had a 20% off plus the right card 5% off, so came out to like 40 for the Steelbook and a bit less for the regular, which I forget at the top of my head. Anyway, let's take a look at these, um, at the Inside Out 2 Blu-ray. I'm definitely really glad to have this. I love the movie, saw it twice in theaters, and I'll now finally be able to watch it at home. Take a look at the Steelbook. You have this nice art. They did use this as a poster. On top, you could see, um, it's a limited edition collectible Steelbook, although it's available widely, so, so in the U.S., um, it's carried by a few different retailers like Amazon, Target, and Walmart. You see 4K Ultra HD plus Blu-ray plus digital code. On the back, you could see that as a Movies Anywhere code, a few images from the movie, a quote from the Variety Review, um, um, promotional renders of each of the motions, 4K Ultra HD, HDR, wire color spectrum, immersive audio, Ultra Play, um, so unfortunately, this does not have Dolby Vision, but it does have Dolby Atmos. And this is the first Pixar movie to be distributed by Sony Pictures Home Entertainment. Taking a look at the regular Blu-ray, this is one of the parts they use for the one of the theatrical posters. And the backs of them are pretty much the same. And unfortunately, the Disney movie in Sarah's Road rewards program is no more so there's no code for that unfortunately so taking a look at the um so let's open these up now and unfortunately the regular blu-ray has no slip cover i thought they were going back to them because they had one for elemental but apparently they're not plus they it's weird as they had a slip cover in the stock photo but they didn't in reality and the 4K Steelbook, that's the only way to get a 4K in the U.S. And then this cardboard thing could just be removed. And then the back has this nice image back here. So you can look inside the package. The Movies Anywhere code will be, will be used by the time this is posted, so don't bother entering the code. So with the 4K Ultra HD disc card, you had this nice um, image of... Um, O'Reilly on her 13th birthday in a with a pink tone over it and then for the regular Blu-ray you have a photo of her with her friends playing hockey with a yellow tone over it so it definitely looks nice and you have this nice image of joy and sadness beneath it So that is not good that I opened this up and the Blu-ray is not even sitting in its tray. But for the DVD art, they have a, a picture of Riley and Val playing hockey with like a, a whitish blue tint. Definitely looks nice. I do like these disc arts that they're going for. A bit different than what they did, a bit different than what they did for the first movie. So long story short, the first part of the review where I unboxed the, the Blu-rays and took a look at the discs and the case and everything. That was when I first got in the mail before I even put in, popped in the Blu-ray player on Tuesday afternoon. And I guess I kind of forgot to record the rest of this review because it's now Friday night that I'm getting to this. So before I um, discuss what I think of the Blu-rays itself and showing up some of the menus and everything, I do want to do a quick comparison to the cases and discs from the first Inside Out movie as well as um, share some dimensions. So um, starting off, um, this is the 4K steel for the first Inside Out movie. What's crazy is that um, I actually bid half the price for the first one, except for the second one, because it was on sale at Best Buy after Christmas, and now it's like insanely priced on eBay now. Like, it was 20 bucks. 
And then other crazy developments that have happened uh, since then are that, um, well, the movie has been 4K. The second movie is completely sold out at uh, Amazon, Target, and Walmart. Last I checked, so that's pretty crazy. Like a day one sellout is just unheard of. I hope they make more. They brand is limited edition, so I'm not sure that they will. But at the very least, they should make a regular packaging with how popular this clearly is. So taking a look at the disc art, you can see they really changed it up. So like the first movie for the 4K disc, it uses that same style that they use in all the 4K packagings back in 2019 and 2020. So it has joy over like a paintbrush and the, what it's painting is the headquarters and then you have the other emotions of the first movie in the background. And the bottom, like, third of the disc is just this big black thing that has all the details. Whereas the new movie is an image from the second movie. The pink tint and all the details are just part of that image. Not having, like, their own area delegated for it. And then for the regular Blu-ray disc, that it uses a, one of the poster arts, one of the key arts. And then the regular Blu-ray disc for the second movie is the same style as the 4K disc for the second movie. Except it's yellow tint and a photo of Riley playing hockey also in the second movie. So the first Inside Out movie, it also has a second Blu-ray disc for the bonus features. The second Inside Out movie, that only has one Blu-ray bonus feature because there's like hardly any bonus features. Whereas the first one has a lot. Taking a look at that discard, um, it's pretty similar to the ones for the second movie in that it uses a screenshot from the movie for the discard. However, it differs from the, new, from the Inside Out 2 discs in that it... And then it doesn't have the, um, a, like a color filter on top of it. And then the, um, the steelbook images that they use in the inside are quite a bit different, but like the same vibe. So the one for the first movie, it uses a image of, of, a of when they're playing in, a, on the, uh, lava and imagination land. The second one is, um, of the sense of self. Both very nice images that on here though. And then it's also quite a bit different in that. For some reason, the second movie Steelbook, it doesn't even have the movie's logo anywhere on the front of it. It's only on the side, which is so weird. That, like, none of the other Pixar Steelbooks that I have are like that. Granted, this is actually the only one that isn't one of the 4K... One of the ones that are, like, new to 4K for 2019. So I don't know if there's others from, like, Cars 3 or something, or Coco. Like, back before, like, or the older ones that are like that, but... Like, not the 2019 releases, but... Between the Inside Out movies, definitely interesting that the first one has the film's logo, the second one doesn't. But they are both similar in that they do use artwork of the motions from each movie. Although the second one kind of looks more like concept art-ish or very specific art style where you, for each of the characters, it, you could see it's like an art style where, where, the, where the lines are rougher. You could see like there's more angles, whereas the one for the first movie, it's an art style that's basically what they use in the movie. And then the back for the first movie, you're going to have a picture of Bing Bong. The second movie is a picture of Riley's head with all of the emotions in it. And notably, the Inside Out steel for the first movie is yellow. The one for the second one is in white. Taking a look at the regular Blu-rays. Um, so the one for the first movie has a steel book. The one for the second movie does not. I don't know if other retailers are in store if it has a slip cover. I got it from Target online. It came in the mail and it did not have a slip cover. So you can see that for both of them, they're kind of using just the poster art. Although there is like different styles, like, uh, the, like on the first movie they have one of the best movies of the year quote review. There's no reviews in the front of the um, Inside Out two one, or you can see up on the top that it, the way they the, the fonts and graphics they use for Blu-ray plus DVD plus digital are a bit different. And also back when the first movie came out, they referred to the digital codes as digital HD. Now they're just called digital codes, but they're the same thing though. And this is how they compare with um, without the slipcover. So as you can see, it's still like quite a... The way they do the graphics with the, what's included in the pack is still quite a bit different. It's like before it was over like a blue line. Now it's part of... Now it's like just overlaying the image without a um, without being on top of a different color. And it's also... The text is also spaced out more as a different font. Here's how the back compares as well. First movie's on the right. So you can see this one has a couple of short films as bonus features. This one doesn't. The second movie is very, very light in bonus features, unfortunately. The, sec the first one only uses uh, screenshots in the movie, whereas the second one also has uh, promotional renders of the characters.
And then one of the things that was different about the digital code art for the first Inside Out was that it's actually a giant picture of anger. Because the second one is just a super generic um, movies anywhere thing that that doesn't even have any characters from the movie or any Disney logos or anything. It's so it's quite a bit different, and it's the same way in the 4K. So um, taking a look at the DVD um, to compare, the DVD is the same way as the Blu-ray in that it uses um in that it uses poster art, whereas the the second movie, it's the same style as the other desk where it uses an image from the movie with a, with a tint of a specific color. So right now I'll give the measurements of the cases. So starting up with the 4K Steelbook. That measures uh, just a little over five and a quarter inches in width. And six and three quarters inches in height. And it is half an inch in, and is uh, just over half an inch in, um, in depth. Regular Blu-ray is um, a little over five and a quarter in width inches, um, six and three quarter inches in height, and half an inch in depth. So exact same dimensions for the two of them. And one additional point of comparison for these is that the Steelbook does not have any characters that are on the side of it, like regular Blu-ray cases normally do from Disney, whereas the regular case for the regular Blu-ray is has um, anxiety on the side. So I've already watched the movie on the um, on the 4K Blu-ray players because I had it, what I put in the disc immediately pops up with this screen, telling me if I would like to pick up where it left off. I mean, I recently finished the movie, so that would just bring me to start of the movie. So I'm going to click no. So when you get to the home screen of the movie, you have this nice animation of the sense of self where the camera pans down. You can see some nice animation of joy and sadness in there as well as different memories going by. If you look closely at the memories, you can't actually make out what's on them. They're just um, either solid colors or gradients, but it's still a nice animation. Although one thing I do wish they did is, it, is I wish they had the memories rotate a little because right now, like they're in water, so they should be rotating a bit and they're not. So it does look a little bit off and kind of lazy, but it is what it is. And then, um, the, there is music on the menu, which is a segment of The Life of Riley by Andre Dotsman on the film soundtrack, which is a very nice song. Although I have the TV muted, both so that's easier for me to, for you guys to hear me. And also that YouTube doesn't ding me for copyright for having the music on there. And this is the scene selection. There's 29 chapters. And note that there are spoilers near, so skip this section of the video if you have not seen the movie yet and don't want to be spoiled. And also there was one big thing that has come out since I, in the time period between when I recorded this video and, well, when I started recording this video and when I'm recording it now, which is that the movie is coming to Disney Plus September 25th. However, I am someone who prefers to use physical media, as in Blu-rays, because it is... Um, the compression is so much better and um and bit rates are much better so and you don't have to deal with them um, like not being able to watch a movie from the internet's out or something so that was the scene selection um this is the language selection subtitles and disc languages so it's limited to english spanish french and um english for the hearing impaired the movie is definitely really nice. It's really, it's a really good movie. It's, for the movie's help, it's not as good as the first movie, but I still really enjoyed it on its own. It's definitely one of the better Pixar sequels, I think. I think for the, I think as a plot, I feel like the second movie's plot is a bit more relatable to me personally. And, uh, I, and I felt the plot, the plots are about equal in my opinion. And like I said, the second one, I think it's more just relatable to me personally. I think the reason why I prefer the first one is because I felt the first one was so much more creative. Like you had the train of thought, you had the dream productions and and, and different areas of long-term memory and the subconscious. And I feel like with the second movie, it's not as creative. Like you have the sarcasm, you have a stream of consciousness, but like other than those two things, we really didn't go anywhere new and besides the vault. But I feel like the vault is, I'm not really sure what that's an idiom for. Like the subconscious works as a jail and that's kind of, what the idiom is, but the vaults, I'm not really sure what this idiom is. That's just why I feel like the first movie is a bit more creative in that regard. And the film does have, does not have Dolby Vision, but it does have Dolby Atmos. It does sound well on my sound bar. But, and the film does look really good as well on, on, um, on the 4K Ultra Cheap Blu-ray. 
So this is the regular 1080p Blu-ray when you plug it into the, or when you, rather when you put it into the Blu-ray player. This is the screen that pops up with the language selection. On the Ultra HD Blu-ray, you do get this menu the very first time that you put it, that you uh, put the disc on, and uh, and it looks the exact same as this. However, it doesn't show up in subsequent viewings. You have to go into the main menu to change the languages for subsequent viewings. And again, the menu is still um, on mute. And the movies these days, they don't even have um, previews anymore. So I'm just going to skip past this Disney logo. There's no trailers or anything. That is a pretty neat image that they use for the loading of the Blu-ray. The Ultra HD Blu-ray doesn't have that because it doesn't take as long to load. And since I mentioned the, um, and so I did a comparison of the disc, I'll also note that this is a quite a bit different menu than what they had on the um, first movie's menu. The first movie for its menu, it was uh, like an animation of the, of like the circles in different colors. So like the type of animation they use a lot in the marketing, whereas this one's actually from the actual movie. So for the bonus features section, this is on the regular Blu-ray, not the 4K Blu-ray. You have two documentaries that are like eight minutes long each. Like eight, I think one was eight minutes, one was 11 minutes. So they're called New Emotions and Lock in the Vault. Those are both pretty interesting, although like they used to have so many more. And so it's just definitely a shame that there's so few now. And for deleted scenes, you have five deleted scenes, which are fine. And what really sucks is they don't even have a director's commentary. This is the first ever Pixar movie that doesn't have one. Technically, Luca doesn't have one on the Blu-ray, but they have it on the digital and Disney Plus. But this one doesn't even have it done on digital, so... It's definitely disappointing. So with the bonus feature menu here, it uses the pink background. Scene selection would be the exact same as on the 4K Blu-ray. And then set up just like the regular Blu-ray, I mean the 4K Blu-ray uses orange background. So for this one, it defaults to English 5.1, the 4K defaults to Dolby Atmos, but this one also has 7.1 for English. And again, it also supports descriptive audio and um, Spanish and French. So last but not least, this is the DVD menu. It uses the same image, but it uh, it doesn't have French. And it's so much, obviously, a much lower resolution than what they have on the, on the Blu-ray. Again, I still have the volume on mute. And this does have Disney Fast Play. So the main menu uses the same animation, but then for the for the main section of the menu, but then for the Scene selection part, it has an image of, um, of Riley playing hockey with, um, with that being overlaid over the scene selection. Same image each time. Admittedly, this is actually my first time using the DVD. I don't use DVDs anymore unless I absolutely have to because it's so much less, because it's not nearly as good as 4K Ultra Blu-ray, but here I'm using it to show it for this review. And again, this is scene selection, so there's going to be spoilers that you haven't seen the movie. And it's so much more clumsy than um than the Blu-ray menus, the scene selection. And it's always like that, because the Blu-ray, is that, the whole thing, you just turn. It's, this, it's like only shows four at a time. And then like the setup menu is a whole other thing, too. So the yeah, Blu-ray is just so much better than DVD in general. So like over here, the, for the setup menu, you have an image of joy with that being overlaid over yellow background. When language, that's yet another setting menu. It's definitely, it's so much more cumbersome than, than Blu-ray. I mean, that goes for any movie. It's not just Inside Out, too. You see, said just for the language settings, anxiety for the for the subtitle settings. So so it is cool that you do get these additional images that you don't get over on the... Um, so it is cool that, so, so like, it is cool that you get these different settings that you don't have on the... Blue, or rather images that you don't have on the Blu-ray, but like I'd rather it just be less cumbersome. So I do prefer Blu-rays for that reason. And then one additional thing that I'll note about the DVD menus is that the, is that the main menu for the DVD, that has the music, the same Life of Riley music that the Blu-rays use. 
But the scene selection cinema menus, those have no music at all, so there's no audio, just images. Back in the day, they used to have audio in them, but these days they don't do that anymore for the DVDs. So I guess that's the trade-off. With the DVDs, you get like extra images or something, which is neat, or extra graphics that the Blu-ray doesn't have. But then it's a lot more extra clicking, which is definitely annoying, and you don't have music with it either. But but of course, Blu-rays are better for so much other reasons that that um that the type of images I'm or graphics I'm getting with the with the menus is less than considering that I'm choosing which format I'm watching on. So overall, I definitely say that this is a really nice Blu-ray to have. If you're able to get your hands on a 4K steelbook, I would definitely recommend doing so because. In the event it comes back in stock, it's not going to be in stock for long, I don't think. If they ever re-release the 4K, and definitely recommend picking it up. And you can't get one. I'm, I mean, the regular Blu-ray is definitely a good, definitely something to settle for. But I do would recommend the 4K over the regular Blu-ray, just because it's better resolution, HDR, Atmos, and everything. But anyway, let me know in the comment section below what you think of this 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray for Inside Out 2, and how you think Disney and Sony handled the release of the 4K Steelbook, whether... They clearly didn't make enough, or they should have had a regular version as well. Or, um, or what do you think about the movie in general? So, um, thank you so much for watching this video. Make sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you soon for another review. Bye now.